About 68 million years ago, North America was a warm, semi-tropical landscape, and it was ruled by one of the most fearsome predators to ever walk the Earth, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. We're talking about a creature that weighed over 10 tons, had a bite force strong enough to crush bone like crackers, and senses sharp enough to detect prey from far away. In fact, scientists believe its vision might have been up to 13 times better than ours. So yeah, if you were somehow dropped into the late Cretaceous period, the last thing you'd want is to be anywhere near this apex predator. So let's say you wake up in the Cretaceous. What's your plan? First instinct might be to run. But where? Water? Nope. Not safe. Heading south? Bad idea. That path leads you straight into the jaws of other meat-eating theropods, some almost as nasty as the T-Rex itself. So maybe you think, all right, let's go north. Colder climates, fewer dinosaurs, right? Well, not exactly. Because if you managed to make it all the way to what we now call the Arctic, you'd still be in trouble. Why? Because even the frozen north had its own tyrannosaur lurking in the snow. Meet Nanooksaurus, the polar bear lizard. And yeah, this wasn't just some scrappy cousin of T-Rex. Nanooksaurus was a legitimate predator in its own right, ruling the prehistoric Arctic with deadly precision. Its discovery was nothing short of a miracle. In February 2006, paleontologists digging in Alaska's Prince Creek Formation, a remote rugged area hundreds of miles from the nearest town, unearthed pieces of a dinosaur skull. They found parts like the upper jaw, top of the skull, and lower jaw. At first glance, it looked like they had stumbled upon a known Tyrannosaur, maybe an Albertosaurus, Dasplatosaurus, or Gorgosaurus. Even if it wasn't a new species, the find was still massive news. It was the northernmost Tyrannosaur ever discovered, which challenged long-held beliefs about these dinosaurs being strictly warm-weather creatures. Apparently, Tyrannosaurs were a lot more adaptable than we thought. But here's where it gets really wild. When scientists took a closer look years later, they realized this wasn't just a new species. It was a completely new genus. Because it came from the Arctic, they named it Nanooksaurus, which literally means polar bear lizard. That discovery blew minds in the paleontology world. Not only was there a new Tyrannosaur on the scene, but it also appeared to be closely related to the king itself, T-Rex. Some studies suggest Nanooksaurus might have been its second closest relative in North America. So yeah, even the Arctic wasn't a safe zone back then. The Cretaceous was just full of surprises. After paleontologists placed Nanooksaurus within the Tyrannosaurini subfamily, home to heavy hitters like T-Rex and Dasplitosaurus, a new mystery surfaced. Where exactly did this Arctic predator come from? Two main theories are on the table. One suggests that it descended from a North American Tyrannosaur that somehow made its way back up to the Arctic. The other theory points to an Asian origin, proposing that an ancestral Tyrannosaur migrated across the Bering Land Bridge, but chose to stay in the North, never venturing south. The Asian connection has been gaining traction, especially with the recent discovery of Asia Tyrannus, a small deer-sized Tyrannosaurid from China. Its skull structure bears a striking resemblance to that of Nanooksaurus, leading some scientists to believe it could be the direct ancestor of this polar predator. Still, nothing set in stone. While Asia Tyrannus might look like a smaller version of Nanooksaurus, the Arctic Tyrant still shares many traits with its southern cousin, T. rex. Like rex, it had an S-shaped neck, tiny arms, a broad, heavy skull, and a stockier, more muscular build, unlike the more streamlined forms seen in the Alberto Serenai group. Where Nanooksaurus stands apart is in the details. It was smaller than T-Rex, had more deeply set, narrow teeth, and noticeable bony ridges above its eyes. It also had some unique skeletal quirks. For example, a long pointed process on the frontals that separates the prefrontal from the lacrimal bone, a thin spur along the parietals, and unusually small front teeth compared to the ones that followed. And since it lived in a cold, dark environment near the North Pole, Scientists speculate it might have been covered in feathers to survive the frigid winters. 
We haven't found direct fossil evidence of feathers on Nanoxorus just yet, but we've got a strong clue from its cousin Euteranus in China, a fellow Tyrannosaur that lived in a similarly chilly climate and was fully feathered as an adult. If Nanoxorus was feathered too, it likely had a light-colored coat to help it blend in with the snowy terrain, kind of like a polar bear. And while the idea of a giant snow-camouflaged, feather-covered tyrannosaur might sound like something out of a sci-fi movie, that might have been exactly what this dinosaur was. But don't let the polar bear comparison fool you. Nanoxorus was way bigger. At first, based on early fossil finds, scientists thought it was a medium-sized predator about 20 feet long and weighing close to a ton. Still impressive, but not mind-blowing by tyrannosaur standards more in line with the largest ceratosaurus specimens. But paleontology threw us a curveball. New research suggests that Nanuxaurus may have been 300% bigger than those early estimates. Instead of topping out at 20 feet, it might have reached lengths of nearly 30 feet and weighed about three tons, making it not just the largest carnivore in the Arctic, but the biggest land predator to have ever lived in any polar region. And it doesn't stop there. Some paleontologists think it could have grown even larger, possibly exceeding 35 feet and rivaling the biggest Dasplatosaurus specimens. If that's true, then Nanoxaurus just went from being mid-tier predator to one of the largest tyrannosaurs we've ever found. At that size, this polar lizard could have taken down just about any dinosaur that crossed its path and did it with the most iconic weapon in the Tyrannosaur family arsenal, that earth-shattering, bone-crushing bite. And when we talk about Nanuxaurus's bite, yeah, it was absolutely brutal. Like every member of the Tyrannosaur family, Nanuxaurus had a massive, heavy-duty skull built for destruction. In life, that head was wrapped in thick, powerful jaw muscles, making it a force to be reckoned with. But what made Nanuxaurus unique was its lineage. It was more closely related to the bulkier Tyrannosaurus, so its skull wasn't just long, it was extra wide too. That means more muscle, more leverage, and a nastier bite. And here's the kicker. Out of all the body parts that got bigger over time, the head saw the most growth. That's a pretty solid clue that Nanuxaurus had an incredibly strong bite, even when compared to its already terrifying cousins. Unfortunately, because fossil remains are limited, scientists haven't been able to run a detailed bite force analysis just yet. So instead, they look at similar sized relatives, like Gorgosaurus, Dasplatosaurus, and Albertosaurus for reference. But even that doesn't narrow things down much. Estimates for those dinosaurs range anywhere from 10,000 to a jaw-dropping 40,000 newtons. That's about 2.5 times the bite force of a crocodile, just for comparison. Bottom line, it doesn't matter what the exact number is, whatever it was, it hit like a wrecking ball. As the animal thrashed and pulled, it would rip away massive sections of its prey. Imagine someone dragging a giant eraser across your body and just wiping a whole piece of you clean off. And let's not forget the teeth. Even though they were slightly smaller than T-Rexes, they were still enormous by any other standard. Some over four inches, 10 centimeters long. They were curved like hooks to trap prey, and they had razor sharp serrations that sliced through flesh like a hot knife through butter. With a weapon like that in its mouth, Nanoxaurus could easily kill or fatally wound just about anything it wanted. As for what it hunted, Based on fossil evidence from its environment, it likely fed on plant eaters like hadrosaurs and ceratopsids, but one creature seems to have topped the menu. Pachyrhinosaurus, a stocky, horn-faced herbivore that, despite its armor, probably didn't stand a chance when Nanoxaurus came calling. Mainstream media loves to show Pachyrhinosaurus being hunted by groups of Nanoxaurus, suggesting that this arctic predator was a social pack-hunting animal. But here's the reality, there's actually no solid evidence to support that idea. That whole hunting in packs thing probably stems from older studies that underestimated how big Nanuxaurus actually was. That said, some paleontologists haven't completely ruled it out. 
Given the brutally cold and dark conditions of the Arctic, it's possible Nanusaurus may have benefited from some degree of social behavior, whether that meant coordinating hunts or huddling together for warmth. Living in groups might have also helped juveniles survive the harsh environment. Still, the fossil record paints a grim picture. Despite any advantages pack life might have offered, many of the young didn't make it. In fact, Nanuxaurus has one of the highest numbers of juvenile specimens ever found for a theropod dinosaur. So far, no fully grown adult has ever been discovered, suggesting this was a world where only the absolute toughest could survive. And here's where it gets even more intense. Those same fossils revealed that Nanuxaurus didn't migrate south when winter hit. Nope. Instead, they stayed put in the Arctic year-round. A bold move, considering just how nasty those winters were. Research shows that during the winter months, Nanuxaurus may have endured up to 120 days of near-constant darkness, freezing temps, and relentless blizzards. That kind of environment makes a strong case for full-body feathering, something many scientists believe was essential for survival. To hunt in those pitch-black frozen conditions, Nanuxaurus would have needed to rely on more than brute strength. It likely had super sharp senses, especially sight and smell. Some researchers even believe its sense of smell may have been better than that of T. rex, which is already considered to have had a nose rivaling a bloodhound. If that's true, Nanuxaurus could sniff out carcasses from miles away, regardless of freezing air, mask scents, or winds blowing in the wrong direction. That kind of ability would have given it a huge advantage when food was scarce and visibility was nearly zero. And finally, there's reason to believe that even its legs and feet were specially adapted for this unforgiving terrain, a topic we'll dive into next. Given how heavily the Arctic was blanketed in snow, it's not hard to imagine that Nanuxaurus might have evolved some clever adaptations to help it move smoothly across icy terrain, maybe even walk on ice without falling through. Now, to be fair, no fossilized feet or leg bones have been found yet to confirm this theory. But some scientists think it's totally possible that Nanosaurus had special heat-conserving feet, uniquely shaped toes for better traction, and powerful legs that gave it solid mobility in the snow. Basically, the dinosaur version of snowshoes with turbo boosters. And while the winters in the Arctic were nothing short of brutal, life in the region wasn't all gloom and doom. To balance out the long, dark winters, the Prince Creek Formation enjoyed extended summers. They weren't exactly balmy, but they were calm, bright, and came with their own version of midnight sun, weeks of near-constant daylight. These polar summers had a huge impact on Nanuxaurus's life cycle. Egg-laying likely happened at the beginning of the season, time to give hatchlings the best shot at surviving before the cold returned. Its diet also seemed to shift with the seasons, particularly since many of the other animals in its ecosystem did migrate south when things got icy, leaving Nanuxaurus as one of the few permanent residents. In fact, it's the only animal we know of that had a widespread presence throughout the entire Prince Creek region. Most creatures picked a specific area to stick to. For instance, Edmontosaurus liked the coastal lowlands, while Pachyrhinosaurus preferred upland territory. But Nanuxaurus? It was everywhere. That alone shows just how dominant this Tyrannosaur was, and how incredibly adaptable the whole Tyrannosaur family could be. Nanuxaurus didn't just survive in the Arctic, it thrived, moving through multiple environments and likely feeding on a wide range of prey. But what really turns heads is the fact that the Arctic wasn't just home to dinosaurs. There was a crazy amount of non-dinosaur life too. Creatures like Similodon, Gypsonictops, ancient marsupials, early mammals like Stigamus and Unwakames, plus over 60 different kinds of trees. It was a full-blown prehistoric ecosystem. The one thing you wouldn't find? Cold-blooded animals. No snakes, crocs, frogs, turtles, or lizards. The freezing climate simply wasn't compatible with ectotherms who rely on external heat to function. And towering over it all was Nanuxaurus, 
Among the biggest creatures in the region, only Pasherinosaurus and Edmontosaurus came close in size, but when it came to predators, nothing else even competed. Its nearest rival, Saurornithalestes, was around 140 times smaller. That's not a predator's, that's a snack. And what's especially weird is that while Nanoxaurus kept its giant status, most other predators in the region were significantly smaller than their southern relatives. In fact, Arctic theropods tended to be about half the size of their warmer climate cousins. That flips the usual rule on its head. Typically, animals in colder climates evolve to be bigger, not smaller. So this has led scientists to think that food scarcity, perhaps caused by an overabundance of small predators, may have driven this Arctic dwarfism. Now, as for Nanoxaurus, its massive size gave it a serious advantage, one that no other predator in the Arctic could match. While other theropods shrank down due to food scarcity, Nanoxaurus stood tall as the only one capable of going after big game. That meant zero competition at the top and no need to downsize. With power, size, and isolation on its side, Nanuxaurus was the undisputed apex predator of its frozen world, ruling the Arctic ecosystem from around 70 to 68 million years ago. That's right, it didn't actually make it to the very end of the Cretaceous period. Though, considering what was coming, that might not have been the worst thing. Its reign may seem short, but that could be the result of living in such a wild, unpredictable environment. Then again, maybe there's a deeper mystery still waiting to be uncovered. One thing's for sure, we're just scratching the surface. Every fossil, every fragment could tell us more about this incredible predator, the only tyrannosaur we've ever found that ruled the poles. Want to keep exploring the prehistoric world? Just click the video on your screen and join us for the next adventure. See you there.